the Indian Ocean. Diego Garcia has been used for, uh, often used for strikes on Iraq and Afghanistan. The island also played a critical role in the U.S. Extraordinary Rendition Program. The military analyst John Pike recently described Diego Garcia as the most important facility the U.S. has. According to Pike, the military's goal is to be able to run the planet from Guam and Diego Garcia by 2015. Unlike Guam, Diego Garcia has no inhabitants resisting the U.S. military. All of the island's residents were forcibly removed in the early 1970s by the British as part of an agreement with the United States. Most of the former residents of Diego Garcia were shipped to Mauritius, located over 1,000 miles away. For the last four decades, former residents of Diego Garcia and their descendants have been fighting for the right to return. Well, we're joined now by Olivier Bancourt. He is a, le a leader of the exiled people of Diego Garcia and president of the Chagos Refugees Group. He was expelled from his native Diego Garcia when he was four years old. We're also joined by David Vine, author of the book Island of Shame, the secret history of the U.S. military base on Diego Garcia. Olivier Bancoul, I want to start with you. Welcome to Democracy Now! Uh, thank you for inviting me to in the, uh, Democracy Now! Could you talk to us first about the experience of the removal, what you and your family remember of the removal uh, by the British and how it came about? Yeah, the way that we have been uh, removed, it was forcibly removed by the British government in order to make place for uh, the U.S. U U military base in Diego Garcia. Uh, we all have to move uh, f first uh, on Diego Garcia and then followed by uh, the Hauta Island, Palos Banos and Salomon. That means that we have been removed twice. And uh, we have been dumped in the slum of Port Luis without any consideration and uh, without any planning. And uh, all what we used to do in, in Chagos was not the same in Mauritius. Life become more and more difficult for us. This is why we have been trying to see what we can do, and, and uh, it, it gave me this opportunity to be here in the United States to just uh, try to have an open dialogue with uh, a new administration, uh, Barack Obama, President Barack Obama administration to see. And it's uh, very important that uh, on this day, I've been learned that uh, President Barack Obama had been awarded the Nobel Peace Prize, and I think that he will use it in order to solve the problem, to put an hand to all the, the problem uh, uh, faced by the Gaussian community since they approved the, the removal from the birthplace. And when the British removed uh, uh, your people from the island, how many people were removed? Did they offer any kind of uh, uh, any kind of uh, compensation uh, to the families for the properties they lost, and, uh, and uh, uh, what kind of compensation did they receive? When we were removed, we were in all 2,500, but there was no compensation. This, this, by, this had been followed by all the uh, legal battle, not only by anger strike, by demonstration, by uh, Sagotian women, and, and uh, for some years uh, we have received a very li uh, little compensation, which was not enough in order to pay all the debt that we, 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 had, we had done during our stay in Mauritius, because in Chagos everyone has his own house, whereas in Mauritius we have to pay rent, and we don't have money, we don't have a job. And uh, this is why we see, we consider that compensation was not enough, and uh, uh, people are still living in poverty. And uh, we have been dubbed in the slum of Port Louis, the capital of Mauritius. David Vine, you have uh, you have chronicled this incredible story that little uh, is little known throughout the rest of the world. How did the British end up uh, depopulating the island uh, on behalf of the United States? It was, and, and this is the, one of the main the main points of my book, Island of Shame. Uh, it was, from the beginning, a, a U.S. plan. The, the U.S. identified Diego Garcia as the site for a, a military base beginning in the late 1950s and approached the British um, to gain access to the island um, and to remove the Chagossians. And with the help of a $14 million secret payment that we made to the British government, um, we secured their agreement to give us access to the island and then to forcibly remove all the Chagossians, which was ultimately done again on our orders. And the island remains under whose sovereignty right now? It remains a, a British uh, colony. Actually, the last created 
British colony, but the base is, is firmly a, a U.S. base. It's a massive uh, Air Force and Navy base. Now, you went uh, all around the world trying to, to dig up the documents uh, on this. Uh, tell us how you got involved uh, in investigating uh, this scandal. I got involved about eight years ago when some of the lawyers representing the Chagosians in lawsuits in the United States and, and Britain um, contacted me to, to serve as an expert witness in their, in their suits to go and live with the Chagosians um, and to document the effects of the expulsion on their lives. Um, but very, very quickly I, I realized there was a, a larger story that I wanted to understand and, and tell, and that was how the U.S. government came to order the expulsion of the Chagosians and, and orchestrate it, um, and why we have a military base in the Indian Ocean in the first place. And why is Diego Garcia so important? Uh, largely because of its proximity to a large swath of the globe from south, uh, from southern Africa through, the, and especially, the Middle East and the Persian Gulf, um, all the way to South and Southeast Asia. But it's, it's been the, the control that the United States has been able to exert over the Middle East and the Persian Gulf and its uh, oil and natural gas supplies in particular that have made Diego Garcia so strategically important. important. Now, uh, you make the point uh, in your research that the leaders of Congress were not uh, always uh, favorable to this idea of uh, establishing this base on Diego Garcia, and that, in effect, uh, folks uh, in the Pentagon uh, attempted to circumvent political, uh, the political leadership in terms of being able to, to reach the point that they have now of this major military base. That's right. Actually, members of Congress were not told at all about, about the base um, until um, the end of the 1960s when uh, the Navy went to Congress to asking for an appropriation for, for the construction of what they called an austere uh, communications facility, although from the beginning they had plans for a much larger base. Uh, but members of Congress were simply um, not informed uh, about the expulsion of the Chagosians. Um, and were lied to, in fact, uh, at the end of the 1960s and in the early 1970s when they asked about local inhabitants, they were simply told that the island was home to a few transient laborers. Um, this was part of a public relations plan that the, the British helped craft where they would, quote, maintain the fiction, unquote. And those were the words they used. Maintain the fiction that the, the islands were inhabited by transient laborers rather than uh, an indigenous people that the Chagosians are. Um, who had been living there for more than five generations since the time of the American Revolution. Uh, now, Olivia Kuhl, your reaction to being labeled uh, by the Pentagon transient labor laborers, what was life like uh, on Diego Garcia before the military came? Life was very uh, good. Uh, it was, everyone was enjoying uh, life in harmony and peace because we have our culture, we have our tradition, we all have a, a, a house, we all have a job, we, we used to work in a coconut uh, plantation where uh, just after working our work we used to go to the sea to fish and there is a, 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 an idea of, of share between each other. We all live as one family and uh, we have our, our, our culture like our special meal, like our, our music which were, had, been, uh, had been taken off with us because everyone wants to, to promote culture, but what about our culture? They, they just want to destroy it. This is why it's so important for, uh, for us to have our dignity and our fundamental rights back uh, as all human beings to be able to live uh, on our best place. And the rest of the population uh, uh, of the island was scattered not just to Mauritius. What other parts of the world did they end up in? Yeah, um, most of the Sagotian was dumped in, in, in port with the capital of Mauritius. But we have others of our brothers and sisters in Sicil. And uh, where we're still are fighting, the most important for them is li uh, how life was in Chagos is, uh, is, is very different to Mauritius. Uh, and to other places because we, we prefer to be on our birthplace as all human beings because it's something very uh, important to all human beings. Uh, and David Vine, you traced some of this diaspora to uh, other parts of the world as, as well, even to, to England directly? That's right. In the, in the past six years or so, uh, the Chagosians, as a result of the, the struggle that Olivier described that they've been waging for more than four decades now, 
uh, that Chagossians won the right to full British citizenship, uh, which includes the right of abode in, in Britain. So we've seen in the, in the past uh, several years about 1,000 or more uh, Chagossians moving to, to Britain um, where they've, some have been able to improve their lives a bit. M many are actually working in, in low-wage jobs at, at places like Gatwick Airport, um, but they, uh, the diaspora has, has spread uh, while they continue their struggle to return to their homeland and receive proper compensation uh, for what they've suffered in exile. And you, and you mentioned that this is an island that uh, journalists, no journalist has ever visited? Uh, since um, the very early 1980s, um, essentially no journalist has been allowed to go. I was uh, den denied and turned down on, on multiple occasions when I asked both the U.S. And, and British governments for permission to go to the islands to carry out my research, um, and journalists have effectively been barred there for, for more than two decades. Well, I'd like to thank you both for being with us. David Vine, author of the book Island of Shame, The Secret History of the U.S. Military Base on Diego Garcia, and Olivier Bancourt, a leader of the exiled people of Diego Garcia and president of the Chagos Refugees Group. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you for being with us.